Now that we have an idea about how to use some of the basic features of the diagram window, let's go ahead and dive into some of the more advanced features. And probably the first one we should talk about is how you add uh, graphics items to your GUI. So a good graphic is really going to be an important sort of centerpiece to a nice professional looking GUI and it's going to provide a visual framework that you can use to add inputs and outputs. There's a few ways to add graphics items to the diagram window. <clears throat> One of the easiest is to generate uh, the graphics object in an external drawing program and then uh, select uh, the object and copy it to the clipboard and then finally paste it into the diagram window. So I like using Canvas, but really any uh, drawing program is going to work. So here uh, in Canvas, I've generated a, a drawing of a ranking cycle uh, that has reheat. And I can select and copy this drawing here. I'm just using um, Control C or the copy command. And then I'll return to ease. And uh, I'll make sure the diagram window is in development mode. And then I'll use the paste command here in ease. Uh, to paste the uh, graphics object uh, into the diagram window. If you have the annual or the commercial versions of Ease, uh, then you really can only use uh, a bitmap or an enhanced meta file uh, when you're doing this. In the professional version, which is the version I'm using here, you're going to see that you get this paste format dialog pop up if the graphic object is available in more than one format. In most cases, the uh, device independent bitmap. Uh, or the enhanced meta file is probably your best choice. Um, objects that are pasted as bitmap in particular uh, are likely to require a large amount of memory and not scale very well. Selecting the paste button is going to paste the uh, graphics object right here in the diagram window and then you can uh, drag it around wherever you'd like uh, in sort of the usual way if you uh, select it you see you get these eight handles and you can use those to resize the object as well. If you depress the shift key while you're doing this, then the aspect ratio of the object is going to remain unchanged. So you can also generate objects um, using any of these graphics primitives that you can see here on the toolbar. Um, so if you have a uh, commercial or an annual version, then you can select lines, uh, ellipses, or rectangles. If you have the professional version, then you also have access to polylines and polygons. Now there's a few features of these uh, graphics primitive objects that are worth talking about. So let's select the line here uh, and I get this line tool and I can draw a line and one thing I can do when I uh, draw a line is enforce that it be you know, horizontal, vertical, or at a 45 degree angle and I do that by holding the shift key down while I draw it. If you want to modify the project, the properties of any of these objects uh, then all you would do is double click on it and that brings up this characteristics dialog for this, for this line for example. So for the line I can do things like add arrows or I can change the color or the thickness of the line. Um, if I click this uh, locked box then what I'll do is actually lock the line in place on the diagram window so I'm no longer able to move it around with the cursor. If I don't like that anymore of course I can unlock it. Um, you can specify that the object is shown all the time, which is pretty typical, but you can also specify that it's only shown before calculations start or after calculations are over. And that's really handy if you want to sort of guide users through using your GUI by indicating, you know, inputs that have to be set and then highlighting outputs that have been calculated. Now finally, in the professional version of Ease, you can give the object a name, and that is really handy because it allows you to then control the attributes of the object programmatically. So um, when we get to things like animating a GUI, you know, we can actually control its position programmatically. So you can give it the name dot left or the name dot width or something. And you can control those attributes. All these other objects will have similar attributes and they can also be named and controlled as well. Uh, again, only if you have the professional version. In the professional version of these, there's also a palette of graphics items that are sort of prepackaged for you. And you can access those from the diagram window toolbar by selecting the palette button here. Now, the graphics items that are shown in the palette are actually located in the um, user lab palette directory or within a subfolder in that directory. So the drop down list here at the top of the dialog controls which graphics items are displayed. So by default, you'll see all of them but you can also uh, down select to any of the subfolders that are that are in the uh, in the palette directory 
Graphics items uh, can also be added to the palette. So you can add your own graphics items as a bitmap or an EMF or a JPEG or there's other formats as well. So for example here I'm going to go ahead and uh, save my ranking cycle graphic as an EMF file and I'm going to put that um, right into the miscellaneous subfolder of the palettes folder. And once that's done, what you'll see if you select the palette button is that <coughs> if I go into the miscellaneous category, I now have access to my ranking uh, cycle graphic. And alternatively, if I had uh, a whole bunch of these things that didn't uh, belong to a, a subfolder or a category that already exists, I can make a new subfolder and then that would appear. So for example, maybe I want to start a new subfolder called cycles and I can put my ranking uh, cycle graphic here and now when I go to the palette you'll see that I have a whole new category that I can select called cycles and if I click on that then I'll see my ranking cycle and whatever other graphics items I, I chose to, to put there. So you can really customize your palette uh, based on the kinds of simulations that you're working on and, and that's really nice if you have these graphics items that you tend to use kind of over and over again. All right, there's one final way to add a graphics object. And again, this is only something you can do in the professional version of Ease. So down here, you see the Add Picture button uh, that's at the bottom left of the Diagram Window toolbar. And if you click on that, what you can do is uh, put any type of graphic file um, uh, from the file into the Diagram Window. So the major advantage of using the Add Picture button here is that the file name to be loaded can be stored in an Ease string variable and then saved with the Ease program. So um, if you change the file name in the string, you're going to automatically load and display um, the desired figure when the diagram window is, is, is shown. And, and you can actually um, change the file name, the string variable, programmatically if you'd like to actively control what picture is shown as people use your, your window. So let's do a real simple example here. Um, I'm going to assign um, two strings, so file name $1 and file name $2, and I'm going to assign these to the names of two graphic files that I just found in the, in the palette under the electrical subfolder. So one is a battery, file name one is a battery, and file name two corresponds to a picture of, of a bulb. So now I'm going to select the Add Picture uh, button from the, uh, from the Diagram Window toolbar here, and that brings up this uh, dialog. And uh, right now you can see the Edit uh, field to, to the right of the file name dollar is empty, but when I click that field, um, then I um, am going to get a, a dialog that will allow me to navigate to a graphics file. So here I'm just going to select um, basically anything. So I guess I'll select the battery. Uh, graphics, but we're going to adjust it later programmatically. And then I got to name uh, this object. So I'm going to call it uh, picture. And what picture is going to allow me to do, what that name is going to allow me to do is access any of the attributes of this object. So now <coughs> if I go to the equations uh, window, if I assign picture.filename dollar to the string file name one dollar, then what I'm doing actually is I am um, assigning uh, the, the graphics object that is going to be shown in this picture object to whatever it is uh, directed to by a file name $1. So in this case, uh, I guess it's going to be the battery. Right? If I assign a picture dot file name dollar to file name $2, then I'm going to get the bulb. Right? So I can do this here sort of in this clunky way where I go back uh, and forth between the equations window and uh, the diagram window. And, uh, you know, as I am uh, doing this, one thing you'll notice right away is that uh, although they both look about the same size in the palette, they're actually very different sizes, so very different numbers of pixels. Um, so one thing I might want to do is also uh, set the width and the height attributes of picture so that they look about the same size. So that's what I'm going to do here. So picture.width and picture.height. And now as I sort of go back and forth, you can see that these things switch between the bulb and the battery and that they're both about the right size. And again, I can do this even in a more sort of programmatically sophisticated way. So let's go ahead and add a string variable that's either set to battery or bulb. And based on the string variable, we're going to go ahead and set the file name dollar attribute of the picture object using dollar if directives. So here, um, once I have that set up, 
uh, I can go ahead to the diagram window and I will um, add an input so here's a text input and the input's going to be that string variable and then I'm going to go ahead and constrain the values of the string variable to the string list so either battery or bulb uh, I'm also going to add a calculate button and now if this works um, I can go into development mode in the diagram window and just um, select which picture I want so select uh, the value of the string variable and then hit calculate and it will pop up one picture or it'll pop up the other picture and you can see how this capability is going to be really useful if you want to control what picture to be displayed on your GUI based on the inputs or the calculated values of some outputs or, or however you want to set that up.